the magician. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of White King Granulated Soap present for your enjoyment tonight and every weekday evening at this time, Chan Du, the magician. Listen, and you will travel to strange lands. You will thrill to high adventure, romance, mystery. The magic of Cairo and Baghdad and the East with their strange secrets and mysterious ways will hold you spellbound as our story unfolds. You will come to love this drama as it is played against a backdrop of oriental color and intrigue. And just as you will like our story, so will you like the soap we make. White King Granulated Soap. It is so easy on hand that thousands and thousands of ladies say it's just like magic. There are many tales told on the radio, but only one Chandu. There are many soaps on your grocer's counters, but none like White King. You will love White King granulated soap. And when you buy White King tomorrow, save the box top. And tell your friends to save White King box tops, too. Now, let the play begin. <music> Betty Regent, tricked into going with Abdallah on a trip into the Sahara to look for her father learns in Fayum that the trip was planned only to divert Chandler's attention to a long search for her. But much sooner than expected, Chandler has found Betty and brought her back to Mena House, the hotel on the edge of the desert from which he is investigating the sinister activities of the man known only as Roxor. The present episode begins in the Regent's suite at the hotel. It is night. Chan. The magician. So then what, Betty? Well, that's all. I wasn't out of my room, not once. Didn't you see anyone but Abdullah and that woman? No, I didn't, Uncle Frank. Amina, her name was. She stayed right there every minute except when she went down for her meals. Well, even when Abdullah came to see me, she just sat there in the corner on a cushion. Were you locked in? No, of course not. But Abdullah said I had to stay there. And I thought every minute he might come and get me and we'd go wherever Daddy was. How could you be such a goop as to believe anything Abdallah said? I know it was silly. This Amina, Betty, was she at the hotel when you arrived? No, but Abdallah brought her right away. And you know what? She lived in New York for a while. That's where she met her husband. His name's Hassan and he's... Hassan? Not the man who locked us in that room in Alexandria. Was it, Betty? Well, I don't know. I didn't see him. But, Uncle Frank, Amina did say he worked for Abdallah and wouldn't tell her what he was doing. Is everybody in Egypt involved in this? More people than you'd think, Dot. Now, Betty, think. It's important. Is there anything else Amina told you? Well, I thought I told you. She said she listened outside the door when Abdallah was talking to her son. Go on. Well, Abdallah said I had to be watched and kept out of sight, so you'd be too busy looking for me to bother about Roxor. What? They said Roxor? Well, not by name, I guess. But something about some papers that would reach their destination while you were hunting for me. So I suppose that meant Roxor. Oh, you've been a big help, that's for sure. I didn't mean to mix everything up. I'm so sorry, Uncle Frank. Now listen to me, Bob. We've been all over this and there's nothing to be gained by going over it anymore. Betty was wrong. She knows it now. And this must end it. I don't want her reminded of it again. Is that clear? Well, sure. When you get that look in your eye, I bet even Roxor would run like a stricken deer. <laughs> <laughs> and, Betty, you must promise me you'll never, never do such a thing again. You know I won't, Mother. That Abdallah. There's someone at the door, Frank. I'll see who it is. Mother, it's an Arab. Good evening. Peace be with you, Chandu. Thy day be happy, friend. From many men I have heard of thy power as a magician. Oh? And when I knew thou wert indeed in Egypt, I journeyed from the desert to speak with thee. You are most welcome. Come in. I am called Ahmed. I, too, have powers not given to every man. Will the great Chandu be pleased to witness my skills? Why, yes, if you like. Oh, good. You'll have to be good to beat Uncle Frank, I'll bet. I bet he isn't half as good. 
What kind of tricks can you do, Ahmed? Many. Would the young Effendi like to see them? Oh, I certainly would. Be it so. Now, if the lady will allow me to take her ring. Mine? Oh, not the emerald Uncle Frank gave you. Don't you do it, Mom. Let him have it, Dorothy. Well, here it is. I take it in my hand, so... I throw it from the open window. Ah, it is gone. Oh, but oh, wait, 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 wait. Give him a chance to show you the trick. But I saw it go flying through the air right out the window. Now, if the lady will take an orange from the bowl on the table. Which one? The one you choose. Here is a sharp knife. Cut the orange if it pleases you. Very well. There. Oh, there's something hard inside. Look. My ring. Oh, well done, Amir. Well done. The praise of Chandu falls upon the ears like rainfall in the thirsty sun. And can he lay it on? Oh, I like it. It sounds kind of poetic. And now, Amir? If Chandu pleases, I will perform the feat of sand divining. Oh, I see. You mean tell our fortunes, Amir? Oh, yes, do. By all means. Let's see if anything more can happen to us. The sand can only interpret what is written in the will of Allah. What are you going to use for sand? I have brought it. It is here. Well, we'd better spread the paper on the rug. Uh, get that newspaper, will you please, Bob? Sure. Shall I spread it all the way out? Yes, Bob. There you are, Ahmed. It is well. I pour out the sand so... I seat myself beside it. The lady will hear what the sand reveals. Yes. What shall I do? Only be silent while I draw in the sand the mystic symbols. The crescent of Islam. The desert sun. The blossom of the lotus. The blossom of the lotus. What do you see on it? I see thou hast come from far away, from across blue water and high mountains. Isn't it terrific? I see a house not far from the sea, where the sun shines as in Egypt. It is quiet now. The house is empty. That sure sounds like our house at home. For two reasons it is empty. Those who call it home are far away, but more... A precious secret has been taken from it. Frank, he's uncanny. Under the earth in this house is hidden in a room and guarded by the figure of a holy man. Dost thou understand this, O sister of Chandu? Indeed I do. Can you tell me if I'm to find the one I came to Egypt to look for? I cannot see it clearly. Many times sand will not give up its secrets when the omens are not good. Oh. I see thee going into far countries seeking, seeking, but the end of thy search is concealed from me. Oh, isn't that just the most disappointing thing you ever heard? You sound like you believe that stuff. Well, you heard him describe our house. What about that? Oh, Maybe he read Mother's Mind. Telepathy or something. All right, if you want to be cynical. Well, just because I don't go overboard, Bob, girl. Oh, Betty, don't. Ahmed, is that all you have to tell me? Sister of Chandu, it is finished. Well, that's the second time he's called you that, Mom. How did you know she was his sister? Oh, let's not ask him. It's more fun not to know. Ahmed, do my next, will you? If Chandu pleases. Yes, go ahead, Ahmed. As thou says. Once more, I smooth the sand and make the mystic symbols. A crescent of Islam, the desert sun, the blossom of the lotus. Why do you add the lotus blossom on it? It's not a flower of Egypt. Chandu knows the answer to his own question. You're right. I thought so when you began. I'll tell you, Betty. Ahmed will tell you a fortune, and then I'll have mine told. Alone. Oh, now, that's not fair if you hear ours. Oh, yes, it is. Well, if he tells you anything personal about the princess, you'll have to tell us. Every word, I promise you. 
All right, Ahmed. Tell the young lady her fortune. You mustn't think I'm curious about you and the princess, Uncle Frank. Oh, no. Nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let him tell her fortune, Bob. The young lady is one of the fortunate ones of Earth. She is cherished by those who love her. Her sky is cloudless. Her days are fair. Well, that's nice, but it's not very exciting. But in the days to come, thou must walk carefully. Put not thy trust in thou, those thou knowest not. It's a little late for that advice. Thou art fair in the eyes of one who seeks to do thy people harm. What does that mean? It means a dollar. Fair in his eyes? Are you kidding? Well, I... He... Did that log make a pass at you? All he said was that I was beautiful. Uh, that he thought so, I mean. Well, I didn't pay any attention to him. I was so angry because he'd fooled me about finding Daddy. Well, why didn't you tell me? I'd have made him beautiful with a shiner you could see from here to Gibraltar. Oh, Bob, you're not very polite to Ahmed, are you? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Ahmed. Well, you know how it is, though, don't you? The young Effendi is wise to guard his sister... I have told her all the sun reveals. Well, thank you, Ahmed. Yes, Ahmed, thank you very much. Come along, children. We'll go down into the garden for a while. I'll have coffee sent up. Would you like something else, Ahmed? Coffee, if it pleases thee, nothing more. How long shall we stay, Frank? Mm, ten minutes will be long enough, I'm sure. Don't forget now, Uncle Frank. You promised. I won't forget, honey. No, Ahmed. What is it? Did you get any word of reason? No, Tondo, I regret. Thou wert wise to know I was of the Brotherhood. Well, I didn't at first, but I never refused to see any man who may bring news. And when you drew the lotus in the sand, of course I was sure. If you have no news of reasons, what message did you bring? In Cairo, Yusuf gave me word to find a messenger who would seek to bring to Roxor the secrets stolen from my sister's house. Well, did you find him? If Roxor had not been in Egypt, I would have failed. But in Alexandria, I found him. Roxor? Oh, you mean the messenger. Good. Though he is a Mussulman, I found him drinking wine. I spoke to him in the cafe. He did not see the drug I poured into his wine. And when he slept soundly, I called a friend to help me carry him to a room and park. Well... Did you find the papers? I am by the grace of Allah, they are here. I took from him every paper on his person. Let's see them. Passport, letter of introduction, credentials. And what's this? Well, it's only a scrap, Ahmed. It may have no value. Well, do you read English? No, I regret. Brother of the Lotus, could I then have served it better? No, no, that's not what I meant. It says to Van Boden, without delay. Is this all? You're sure you searched the messenger thoroughly? By the robe of Mohammed, it is all, Lord Chandu. Is it not enough? They've passed the drawings to some other messenger. The region papers aren't here after all. We pause before we say good evening to suggest that you and your family listen to Chandu every weekday evening at this time. Travel with us to strange places and faraway lands. And thrill with Dorothy Regent and her children, Betty and Bob, as they're plunged into the mystery and intrigue of Egypt and the Near East. And, of course, we'd like to have you use the soap we make. White King's granulated soap. You'll love White King. Anything that can be washed may be washed with White King. With safety to fabrics and colors... Kindness to your lovely hands. The only hands you'll ever have. So on your radio, remember Chandu the Magician every weekday evening at this time. And at your grocers, remember White King granulated soap. No other soap is like it. You will say, no other soap has ever done your work so well. Good night. Chandu the Magician is presented for your enjoyment every weekday evening. Frank Chandler is played by Tom Collins. The makers of White King invite you to listen tomorrow at this time when the story resumes. Chandu the Magician. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.